Hey everyone, I'm here, gonna get going here in a couple of seconds. Just uh, pouring myself a little whiskey to uh, loosen me up for the night. Um, I really appreciate y'all joining me here. Wow, a lot of people already. Um, got my glasses tonight so that I can uh, read people's comments. And um, But anyway, let's get down to this. Um, my name's Bill Schwab and this is Studio Visits with Bill. Some of you might have seen it last week uh, where I had the non-guest of Kara Kuklis, who we will have on again uh, probably next week. Um, Carrick uh, ran into uh, AT&T problems and wasn't able to connect with us, so uh, I ran that one alone. And what I'd like to say is thank you all for watching. It was really incredible. There weren't all that many people watching right at the time it was happening, but uh, afterward I repurposed this, as I will do this show, back to my YouTube channel. And uh, lo and behold, it's been watched a lot. So a lot of fun. I hope somebody's getting something out of it, and uh, you know, it seems to be good. Uh, again, I have my glasses tonight. I've got a drink to go. Um, tonight we've got a wonderful guest um, uh, in Jill Enfield. I'm really excited to have her here tonight. It's going to be really good. And um, we've been working out a couple of tests for the last couple of days. You might have seen some of those online and forgive those. It's kind of a behind the scenes or an outtake version of it all. So I hope you all can hear me. Um, I am going to try to read through some of these comments that are here. I can see that people have joined up. Uh, wow, a lot of people. Thanks very much for tuning in. Let's see here. Uh, anyway, uh, somebody sent me a request to be in the video. Um, we're not going to do anything like that tonight. I'm just going to have my one guest, Jill Enfield. Uh, so before I get going here, let me have a little bit of a swig. Now, um, <clears throat> Jill was kind of enough to join me uh, tonight, which is really great. I mean, I've known of Jill for years and Many of you watching might have known, might know of Jill as well. She's kind of a preeminent voice in alternative um, photographic processes and is not only a really uh, gifted and um, well-respected uh, photographic artist in her own right, she's also a uh, well-known educator and uh, author of um, several books, uh, one of which is just been re-released as a... Um, as a, a new edition of an older book, um, her book, uh, Jill Enfield's Guides to Alternative Processes, uh, which we're gonna talk a little bit about tonight. Um, but I was lucky enough to be included in this one, just one piece, and it's very nice. There's many, many artists in here, and she covers many, many processes, and, and it's a great um, resource for not only uh, people just getting into different alternative processes, but those of us that have been around the block a few times and know, know a few things. Um, she's put it all here into one book, and it's a really great one. Um, now, a bit more about Jill is, um, you know, not only a well-respected artist, educator, she's taught workshops all over the world, um, you know, Norway, Spain, France, Greece, um, and here in the United States, in the Anderson Ranch, um, Santa Fe, um, Maine Photographic Workshops, and where I became more familiar with her through a mutual friend uh, was this last spring, she taught a, um, a six-week intensive um, workshop down at Penland in North Carolina, and, um, but anyway, she was... Nice enough then when I had a show in New York uh, back in November, um, back before the world changed, uh, she teaches also at Parsons School and she was kind enough to come over and um, see my show, see the open of the opening. Um, I was able to walk her through and talk and we went around to a cafe and talked a little bit and it was really nice of her to be able to come by before she went back up to her beautiful home in the Hudson Valley of New York. But anyway, I'm going to go online here right now and see if I can find Jill, because I'm hoping she's in here. Uh, if you'll bear with me for a second. Um, I have to look through because there's so many people. Uh, here is Jill. So without further ado, people, I'm going to invite uh, Jill Enfield to join the conversation here. And we should pop up any time now. It there worked. There she is. Woohoo! Wow, that's so cool. It worked. <laughs> it worked. That's yeah. really fun. <laughs> so anyway, I hope that I didn't uh, say anything too crazy there before uh, bringing you in. Good. Thank yeah. you so much, Bill. Really, thank you so much for having me and for giving me that lovely introduction. It was uh, no, hey, th <laughs> thank you. This is fun. You know, I mean, ultimately, we're all, we're all a little bit bored right now. So we might, <laughs> might, as, well, we might, might as, as well do this. Might as well do this, right. You know, I mean, no, it's... No, it's really a pleasure to have you here. And I'm hoping that, you know, with each one of these things, you know, more and more people will get interested. And, uh, you know, anyway. So anyway, here you are. And I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> and everything works so far. 
Nobody breathe. We're going we're gonna to be fine. <laughs> no, it's really nice. And, um, and it, it's also, it's fun to see people's comments going up and down the screen. That's neat, too. Yeah, there's Carrick. Uh, I just saw him saying something. Yeah. I was warned Good tonight. By, <laughs> so that's warned cool. to have these tonight. Yeah, it's very cool. I'm so, you know, I, isn't this the week I was supposed to be with you? Or is it next week? But in any no, no, no. This was the week you were supposed this to be with the me. the week, yeah. Yeah. So we were, we were going to have Carrick last week. He was going to be my guinea pig. But you're actually my guinea pig now. So uh, I apologize no, I for mean, that. To, for the real workshop, for the live workshop, wasn't I? Oh, my gosh. That, I, sorry, I forgot all about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, let me just tell everybody that's watching that doesn't know that I run this event up here in northern Michigan called Photostock each year. And Jill was going to be you know, our prize this year, a workshop teacher, and along with Larry Fink and Beth Yarnell Edwards and Renee Baldo, a lot of great people were going to be here, and I'm so sorry they're not going to be. But anyway, so Jill was going to be our star and teaching right here in the workshop where I'm sitting right now. <laughs> and now I'm just here, here by the alone with an empty bottle of with jam, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry I'm not there, but I guess this is better than nothing. Yeah, uh, and, you know, we'll, you know. Getting gonna, used to it. You'll make it here. The world's going to get back to normal at some point here, and we'll have you back. Fingers yeah. crossed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah, and that's, you know, another thing that I was going to talk a little bit about here um, tonight. You know, you know, we can just ramble on, but, you know, the fact that you were going to be here teaching, there's another person who's part of the Photostock community, um, Rebecca Zeiss, who might be on tonight. I can't really. Yeah, upgrade my whiskey, Carrick says, definitely. Yeah, that, well, send me nice some good story. whiskey, Carrick. There you go. <laughs> Uh, maybe that's what I should do is start getting people to send me whiskey. But um, anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I forgot what I was saying already. It's the cheap whiskey. Um, yeah, that's what happens, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. No, but anyway, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll get you here to, for a workshop for real. And what I was saying was Rebecca Zeiss, um, who suggested that, you know, you do something online, which I guess that the both of you have been talking about, and you're going to do something with her like a one on one in zoom. So uh, um, we're going to try We're she's my guinea pig, you know, and we've discussed that, you know, we're going to, I'm going to take the computer into the dark room and she'll want, you know, I'll, I'll put Ruby lift on top of the uh, screen. Right. And also turn the light down. But just in case it pops back up, I want the Ruby lift there. And then she'll well, watch me, and then I'll watch her, and then we'll see how it goes. So Yeah, and I guess that, you know, I mean, it seems yeah. like it'll work just fine. You know, I know that, well, I know that you've yeah. been teaching, you know, you've been teaching a remote class right now, right? And, and other people I know that teach in, in universities, they've been teaching these remote classes, which I guess is working out okay for you or maybe not so well. It's okay. Um, uh, again, it, it was all, I mean, I, it was a dark room class. And so I couldn't keep it as a dark room class. I had two dark room classes at Parsons. And I, I mean, there were two students that did end up having dark rooms, but nobody else did. Yeah, so. And so we had to switch it up. So I, I just, I made sure that I sent them things constantly, people to look at. Um, we talked about you know, a lot had to do with how you're shooting, how you're seeing, instead of they were just getting to the point where they could print. Oh, yeah. You know, I just taught them how to use filters, and they were just learning how to burn and dodge. So it was a shame. That oh, and that's when it all happen. shut down was right at that point. Yeah, it wasn't a good time to end, um, but yeah. it wasn't really a choice. And... Um, it, it, it was a shame, but I, I, I think that, um, you know, you want to keep learning. You don't want to stop just no. because, you know, you're stuck. And for those that do have their own dark rooms, I think that there's a way that you can, you know, continue and move forward by doing it this way, you know, on Zoom right. and have the, you know, there are ways to bring the computers into the dark room. It's just that, I can't be right on top of them while while they're doing it. But as long, right. as, as long as I can watch. And so, you know, Rebecca was great. You know, she was like, look, I don't want to, you know, she was supposed to be up at your workshop with me. And right. she said she really wanted to do it. So I was like, well, let's give it a go and try. 
Yeah, well, I, I hope that it, I hope that it works out. And you know, just to let everybody that's watching know that uh, as long as Rebecca makes it through as the guinea pig, that you'll you'll right. be available to do those kind of things. Um, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, Carrick mentioned something about doing something that way with people, and I suppose mm -hmm. that all you'd have to do is just synchronize and make sure that you all had the same chemistry, so you could send out a, a fact sheet ahead of time of all the things right. that they needed. You know, normally the things you get at a workshop, but get them a couple of weeks ahead of time so that you can have them for your meeting. Yeah, and, and, and that's what we did. We both ordered the same thing. And of course, mine got lost, but... Um, but then she got flooded. Here. So, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't mean to make light of their flooding situation, but I know that... Um, Right, and Rebecca and Clint flooded. were part of the were part of the the um, the mid Michigan debacle there with the, uh, right. the dams breaking. Yeah, yeah. Um, boy, this is funny. I can see all these names flying by and people talking. There's 52 people watching right now, so you're a star. Oh yeah. Yeah, never had anything <laughs> like that. Everybody, I've we should do some sort of a virtual a autograph way. signing. <laughs> it's fun <laughs> to see the names scroll through. You know, yeah. that's, that's fun. And I know a lot of them. And so it's great. And a lot of people that are on are, are other artists that are in the book, which is really nice. That's fantastic. And yeah. that's it. Let's talk about the book a little bit here. I'm going to show the cover again here. Okay. Now, you can, <laughs> you know, for everyone watching, I suppose the easiest way to get this book is through Amazon right now then, right? Yeah, I guess so. You can also go on uh, the Rutledge site and they're giving a 20% discount. So okay. they can do that. Um, okay. And well, what I'm going to do uh, when this is all over with, I'm going to, um, not to rush it, but when uh, I'm going to put into the description, I'll give links to your website and I'll give links to where they can buy the book and things. But, okay. but basically for the time being, if people want it, you should go to, um, to Amazon and just look up Jill's name. And now be careful to order the one with the, uh, this cover because... Yep. Glass house on the cover. Right, the glass house is a new addition, and and that's the one you want to get right now because there's new people added and there's new things added, and it's it's beautiful. It's really, it's really nice. It was really a thrill when the uh, you know the uh, the mail because I live back here in the woods, and the mail lady drives up and she Stop knocks it. on the, the door. And you know, it's something special. She hands me this book, and it's totally unexpected. It's wonderful. So I highly uh, I highly I highly uh, recommend to everybody that they pick it up and not, you know, not only is there a lot of informative stuff, there's a lot of really beautiful work. And as you say, by a lot of wonderful artists, some of whom are watching right now, which is pretty sweet actually. Yeah, it's really nice. And I'll tell you something, I had such a hard time editing and figuring out who could go in. And uh, it's just, there's such fantastic work out there. It's, it really is amazing. I yeah. It. It's just, it's so great to see. Yeah. Now, your first printing of this was in. <laughs> Could well, you and, see that? and the thing is, is your first printing of this was in 2014 of at least this one, I believe. Right. And, and so much has progressed in that short time. One. Yeah, the very first one was 2001. Yeah, way back. Yeah, way back. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And then these, uh, these two, um, this, this last one was really, um, I think that it might be my favorite, you know, favorite one. I, I, I like the shape of it. I like the paper. I love the artwork that's in it. It so, has a really nice feel to it. You know, I don't, I actually don't want to use this one. I want to just keep this one, you know, <laughs> smells like new ink and everything. Yeah. yeah. It, it feels nice and it, you know, and it flows, I think it flows well. So hopefully other people will feel that way too. Yeah, well, I'm sure they will. And I'm sure that it will become a go-to book for a lot of people, um, like your other editions have been. Um, another thing that was going, was happening tonight is I was reading through, you know, I, you know, even though we've talked and stuff, it's, you start mm -hmm. to read somebody's bio and C CV and you realize, oh my God, you know, they, you know, and I don't mean to, you know, say this in any derogatory way, but it's like, oh my God, they've been through the same crazy crap that I've been through. You know, I mean, it's just amazing all the things that you've done. And I know from experience how much of your life that takes. And it's amazing that you've, you know, I mean, That's you remember back in the days of CompuServe <laughs> things, and I was talking to Carrick about this in the beginning when a lot of us were kind of cutting our teeth on this. It's, you know, that seems like a million years ago now. And 
all of the effort of sourcing and finding everything we needed was just a bit of a nightmare, actually. So, I know, know it, it really wasn't. I mean, that's the one thing that's good, I guess, about this digital age is it does make it much easier to find out information. Yeah. Uh, um, and yeah. so, you know, that uh, that does make it um, OK, I guess, to say digital. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, I mean, a totally dirty word. I think that the days have gone when when all that was a problem. I mean, yeah. I mean, you were there. You can remember all the arguments that we all had, and you know, know it's, it's like ridiculous. like another friend of mine said, it's it's like you know we fight so hard because the stakes are so low or something. You know, I mean, it's just <laughs> you know, I mean, in the long run, we were all trying to do the same thing, and it really doesn't matter how we do it. So I'm glad that we've yeah. all gotten over that at least. You know, yeah. No, I agree. And, and, it's, and it is so nice to see so many different people's work. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and that wasn't possible before. No, it wasn't. It, it wasn't at all. I mean, you'd, people would send things. You know, I mean, I've been going through my archives here a lot lately because I think we all have. Um, mm -hmm. But I've been finding things people sent me pre-internet you know and that's how people would do it they would send you their cards or they would send you actually beautiful prints and things but i mean i mean i missed that but there's so much more work to see now that's the thing yeah. and it's it's um like i was explaining on this the other day it's not only inspiring it's it's daunting at times and it can get in the way so you have to kind of meter it but but i know you know it's incredible just the people that i know and you know that are mutual people that i find out it's just you know I mean, there was a time when it didn't seem like there were that many people, but now it just seems infinite, you know. I know, and I wonder if that's because we can see them on the internet or if they've always been there. Um, well, but it's, it is incredible to see how many people do such beautiful work and that I don't know that I would have known them. At any other time, no, yeah. At any other time, because... I mean, look how many, you know, it's hard to get into a gallery. It's hard to, you know, it's, it's hard to even like even shows that where you are, uh, you know, applying for, you know, to be in the show. And it's just, it's hard to get your work out there. And now magazines aren't really there. Right. And right. So this is, um, it, it's very nice to be able to, uh, to be introduced to so many different people. Right, and, uh, and it really has, you know, for better or for worse, it, it sort of has democratized the whole process of things. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it was, you know, just with my experience of coming up and getting into galleries and things was so much different than it is now, you know, I mean, yeah. you know, there were a few things where there were review, there were review uh, expositions and things, which are, you know, end up really being great things in the long run, but there just wasn't that, you know what I mean? You had to do mm -hmm. so much more legwork to, you know, rather than going under one roof and seeing a bunch of people, you know, you just had to try and try and try. And yeah, I mean, they're really, I mean, you know, it's changed a lot. I mean, I know it's taken away a lot of, you know, what we do. That's unfortunate. Yeah, unfortunate. Yeah. You know, it's changed everything from musicians, visual artists, uh, you know, uh, literary artists, maybe not so much with them, but probably so um, journalists, whatever it's, it's really difficult because of this homogenization and things, but still, you know, what I do find now is like you say, the cream does rise to the top and you do find these people and it's just amazing, you know, and I, I, I hesitate to name people right now, but the, you know, like the Rebecca's and the, and the Lori Verba's and the, and the, you know, um, Greg Banks and a lot of people that I've come to know just from Photostock or being online, mm -hmm it's pretty amazing, you know, and, and now we have the opportunity to just in an instant text somebody or like with you, here we are talking and there's yeah. 57 people watching, which is just crazy. Yeah. So anyway, I've been yeah. trying to get some of these, uh, these questions as they fly by here and it's, it's fun. To, I would fun think to that see. would be very difficult. I mean, I'm, I'm missing, uh, you know, I'm only seeing one every few. I, I'm seeing some here and I'm going to, it might be easier on your screen. I don't know if it's and somebody saying here, am I mistaken or is that an old time portrait of your great grandfather in Germany? Uh, when we had camera stores before your family got kicked out of Germany during World War II and opened a camera store in Miami. Somebody's 
throwing you a softball oh, here. So I let's go to that. Did, I wonder who did that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That was good. Well, anyway, keep that in mind. And then there's also, uh, let's see, good grief, a lot of hay babes. And uh, there's Diana Bloomfield. Yeah, you're right. There's a lot. Well, anyway, hi, everybody. This is kind of humbling. So, um, well, let's just, I don't know. Let me just throw out a softball question here. Like, out of all these things you do, what is your favorite to do? I mean, what do you like to do the most? Does it My change or? It changes. It, it definitely changes. But for the past few years, it really has been, or more than a few years, it's been collodion. I just yeah. I love it. I just think it's so much fun to do. And I like it um, uh, in camera. I like it by making positives and doing it in the dark room. I, I, I just like what happens to an image. I've never enjoy just taking well i never like just taking color pictures that never interested me and right. even with black and white i was always doing like infrared and then hand painting and right pushing so, it to the pushing it to the edge a little bit more yeah i mean really i mean you know this one behind me of the adobe i mean it's not like i'm not uh you know painting over my image so you can't see it. So I don't know how much I would say I push things to the edge, but I don't like just shooting and then printing them as they are. I don't right. I don't care about having something be just what you see. I, I've always wanted to change it a little bit and make it my own. So um, I'm really, really still enjoying Collodion. And I, between the hand painting and the Collodion, I think those have what have kept my interest the longest. Yeah, yeah. Now you've been doing the hand painting forever. I mean, that was kind of yeah. one of the first things you started to become really known for, I know. Yeah, that's- um, If my memory serves me correctly, but- Yep, nope, you're correct. That's what I yeah. started doing. And, um, and it's just, um, I don't know, there's certain things that I, I love and that, I'll, that I keep doing um, over and over. And those are two of the, the things that have done most most of the time during my my career I guess. right right yeah. now but also like through your teaching i mean you are um you're teaching darkroom so you're teaching actual you're teaching silver printing and, and more traditional gosh it's so weird to say that but it's more yeah. traditional photography in that respect so i mean like i mean i know from other people that are teaching at the university level who have been keeping their dark rooms and have fought tooth and nail to keep it there. But mm -hmm. I mean, you kind of are a proponent of thinking that it's, it's, it's a very important part of learning photography, right? I mean, it's, I think it's, it's so important. And I think it's really important for them to do, uh, you know, at the beginning, you know, um, right. So I just, I, I think that it's a way when they're doing, and I, and I teach digital also, I teach digital, uh, I teach uh, darkroom and then I teach an alt process class. Um, and I find that with the digital, they're, they're just, they're so fast. You know, they're just thousands and thousands of pictures. And especially when they're beginning, I'm not saying this is what photographers, all photographers do, but right. notice that with my students, they just, they shoot without thinking so much because it's free. You know, they don't have to really think. Yeah, they're not buying a roll of film. For... They're not buying film, and then they're not waiting for the film. And so I, I find it harder for them to think about what's what's in the frame and how, how they're seeing. Um, and the darkroom makes them slow down and really makes them think. Um, so that's why I think it's... I find it very important, uh, an important way to teach. And as far as alternative processes, um, it is open to all the students, not just photo students. So at Parsons, if you're in graphic design, you could take it, or architecture, you could take it. And so you get these kids that see so differently than some of the kids that have been brought up thinking they're going to become photographers. Exactly. And it's so wonderful to have them all in that space together and learning from each other and seeing how they're all reacting to the different processes and it, it's just um i still enjoy it and it, it's been yeah well that was you know
you you touched on something that I was going to ask about also that that um, you know I mean I teach workshops and things but I've never taught at that level where you know there's a lot of people that are coming in that aren't necessarily trying to be you know God's gift of photography or something like mm -hmm. that and and what I always found in doing that was that um, those tended to be a lot more interesting students like you say because they saw things in a completely different way they didn't. They didn't see things through somebody else's eye, you know, they hadn't looked at a million Elliot Erwitz or whatever. Um, but also what I was going to ask was just, you already touched on that, was the fact that now that everything is so instant, it really doesn't give you too much time to sit back and wait. Like I remember, you know, you would take your film in to have it processed if you weren't already doing that yourself. And there was that element of anticipation and waiting and if the film came out and stuff like that. So, yeah. so you do see that as a benefit then as far as your students go. I think now, so. now how are, how is it re, you know a lot of people that I know they're teaching darkroom still it's received really well um, is that what you're finding yeah it, it's very interesting that it it seems to have gone in waves so that when digital first came out nobody wanted to be right in the darkroom they just they wanted digital it was new it was exciting and that's what they wanted. And so for a while, it was sort of the numbers slumped in who was taking alt process and darkroom classes. And now it's like through the roof. There's a waiting list. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and the kids, you know, they, they want to get back to basics and to hands-on. They're on the computer so much with, with their other studies that they don't right. want to be on the computer when it comes to photography or other right. art. They really want hands-on um, and have that tactile experience. Tactile feel and the smell and things that you yeah. don't get from sitting at you know at yeah. the computer. Yeah. So there. Um, so I have found that it's just you know it went like this and now it's. It's gone it's back up through the roof. It's terrific. And I know someone did say something about the price, and it's true. I mean, film is not so cheap anymore. No. Um, so that they do have to be a little careful if they're on budgets, but um, but I think it's worth it. I do too. I mean, there is that rabbit hole that we go down. You know, I mean, there are those of us that kind of dabble in it, and those of us that kind of go crazy down the rabbit hole. And you know, I have thrown a lot of good money at things that you know that six months later there's some easy solution for you know um and there is that element of it but i think that even that is balancing out now you know there isn't the newest camera all the time and there isn't the newest latest and greatest you know we can all yeah. kind of chill out and get back to the business of making work again i think and i don't know it you know we'll like see where it. it goes with that yeah it seems like it um it's uh it's it's a very interesting thing to see i mean even some of the students said well you know they really love film they don't have dark rooms and so they want to see about scanning it in you know and then doing it digitally and and that's right that's one i i think that there's plenty of room for crossovers i don't think that i mean imagine you remember what it was like when we had to make enlarged negatives in the dark room oh know? my god that was so horrible with ortho yeah that it was terrible was awful. it was awful and you were so many generations removed from your original image that it just didn't feel like it anymore and right yeah i have to say that when dan came along and started you know doing the digital the great? digital stuff <laughs> yeah and that was wow it's like oh yeah that that makes sense right you know yeah. and then that whole thing that we're in now where you know they're pretty spectacular, you know? I mean, a good print snipper has a hard time telling what's real film and what's not in some cases. Yeah. So anyway, but- yeah, uh, It's great. And I, I, I love being able to do the digital negatives or positives, depending on if I'm doing collodion and and just um, just having that capability. And, and if you ruin it, it's like, eh. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yep. <laughs> go back and do it again and yeah and it is nice when you know I mean I've been kind of I, I tend to be one of those people that's a little a little too you know I don't know I get a little too technical about it you know it's like if I know I can do something a little bit better I'll push it just that hard whereas sometimes I should just leave well enough alone but 
even in that sense, you know, it's a lot easier to do now with certain programming that some people have come out with that, that helps you hit those curves along the way so that you can actually make a digital negative that works like a film negative. So yeah. that definitely helps a lot. But, you know, like I was saying before about your CV, my head hurts at all of the, <laughs> everything that we've been through trying to get it to this point, you know. And, and the beauty is the internet is that collective thing. I tend to surround myself with people who are much more intelligent than I or much more technical than I am. And that helps. And I'm shouting out to Clay and to Carrick and to yourself and to a lot of people that actually, you know, use a little bit of science and, and it helps it helps a lot. So Oh, I'm not half as technical as some of some people, you know, yeah. like Christina Anderson also. I mean I mean they they just like well, Chris is just voracious. She just, yeah, yeah she just, yeah, she just goes after it, like, Great. until yeah. there's nothing to go after anymore. Right, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah, but but then, you know, I mean, there are people that, I mean, there's people that do that, and, you know, that, that kind of, like, you know, that's their creativity, and that's their art, you know, and then there's other people who take that and, and make the artwork that's incredible, and I don't know, it tends to be some of the people that shoot in the dark a little bit more that I tend to look at their work a little bit more um, mm -hmm. as individual. And I don't think it's because they're not technical. I just think they use a different part of their brain to make it, perhaps. To make it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. I think it's a big difference. I, I just saw someone said Clay Harmon is a madman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that might have been. Clay is the turnip. I don't know whether Clay is on here, but Clay is one of the first people I thought of when I started doing these studio visits. And I wanted to actually physically do them and figuring it would be a great way for me to travel around the country and see all my friends and hang around and yeah. drink wine and beer and whiskey and, you oh know, God. make a YouTube studio thing. So. Is gorgeous. But this, yeah, yeah. So, did you go down there? Did you go to a studio? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's right. You did from, uh, from, from Penland. Yep. Yeah, from it's a, it's, <laughs> it is a bit, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it kind of takes your breath away. It's like, really? Yeah, oh my god! Yeah, yeah. mine yeah. is my basement, and um, and it definitely. But the minute I turn the humidifier off, it smells like a basement. You know, it's. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, Old time well, basement dark room. <laughs> this studio here, it's the first. Uh, you know, I live out in the woods, and so it's been the, the the leaves came out four days ago, and now you would never know they were gone, and it's super humid you know so yeah. i'm here in the workshop where it's very um it's you know i've got the air conditioning on it's nice but the windows fog over like i'm in a like i'm in a fishbowl yeah. you because know, it's so humid out and i know it gets that that i don't i i i know that basement smell i i yeah. my studio was in a basement for 40 years i'm lucky enough to be out of the basement now you know yeah. but uh, but i do i love it it doesn't seem to it doesn't matter to me as long as i have good ventilation i don't care you know what right. the dark room looks like um, no you know it's like the ventilation is just what's really important to me and i've got good ventilation and so it's i kind of get a kick out of it down there good yeah. well so now that's the thing is that you're up in hudson valley now do i understand you live in an old house that was part of a, a munitions factory yeah it was the it it's so cool. It was the headquarters to a gunpowder mill, which I think is pretty funny because of collodion with gunpowder. But yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> so everything is our uh, one. The main room is round, uh, apparently, so that when they had um, explosions, it kept it quieter. <laughs> oh, really? And so that's why it's round. Yeah. So it's pretty cool, and um, it's. It's funny. I mean, it's it's sort of big, but it doesn't seem we really do utilize all of the all of the rooms. And it's really um, it, it's lovely. And the gunpowder mill, the ruins are across the street from us. So we go through walks through the ruins. Of so the you've got access to that. Yeah. So yeah, that's what a, I was working up to is the fact that that you do workshops out of your home your home yeah. dark room. I mean, when times are normal, which, you know, I'm assuming yeah. might not be too much longer before you can resume doing some of that. I'm hoping. Um, um, yeah, I can. It, and it's a big dark room. My dark room in the city wasn't that big. I could only have one other person in there with me. And that was crowded. I, I could actually have three or four people in this dark room and it would be comfortable. Nice. Uh, and yeah. And, and I've had um, 
I've only done private classes uh, so far. I haven't done, um, you know, groups of people here. Uh, right. We've, we've been here a couple of years, and um, but it's it's really fun to have the, you know, the facility here and having uh, students come and um, and learning and even like if they want to work in the evening, they can they could just keep working. And it, it's quite wonderful. Nice, nice. I see somebody's typing in here that's 49 tons of gun, uh, something manufactured oh, in the Civil but, War and parked across the yeah. street. Yeah. So see, uh, you've got somebody there that knows, knows, your, uh, knows your history. Knows the history, yeah. That's good. Yeah, it was a, a pretty huge gunpowder mill. Um, and it, it just seemed so... Um, funny to for me to be at a somewhere where they manufactured gunpowder right i, mean, I know collodion's gun cotton not gunpowder but but it, it goes together it'll it'll it together. it'll explode and burn <laughs> just as bad right. exactly it's just something <laughs> that explodes <laughs> yeah i'm hoping that you haven't had any expo uh, any experience with that happening you know i mean you i know, know that i haven't not. Yeah, yeah. No, I, nothing has uh, has ever blown up on me. <laughs> Do you find what I've found is that, um, you know, I get really, uh, I can habituate out the smell of ether. Like I, I'll be at an event doing, I'll have my, my wet plate trailer out and I'll be doing portraits or something and people will come, oh my God, I smell the ether. It's like, really? I didn't smell anything. And, uh, you know, you do sort of lose that thrill, but uh, I still do like the smell. But now that I haven't been doing it very much lately, like I'll open up a little bit of ether to do some cleaning of something that I need to do. And it's like, whoa, I, I got to start doing this yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, re I really do. Um, I really do like it. I actually Sheriff says it numbs your nose. Yeah, it, it does. Yeah, it does. It also if I if my ventilation isn't good, or if I'm driving with it in a car, I will get sick from it. I yeah. have to be very careful with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you uh, a really quick story. Uh, after I learned from Kara, Kara kind of was my first physical teacher. I had learned through John Popper, I had learned through all of his discs, which really helped you out a lot. So mm -hmm. but I really wanted to work with somebody physically and I went out to work with Kara that way. And um, Oh, that's great. Yeah, but, it, but the thing was, I came home and I started soloing, right? And soloing was a big deal. And I was down in my basement dark room, of course, and I was pouring hundreds of plates. You know, I figured that's the only, like, for anybody, that's the way you really learn something is just do it over and over and over and over and over, and over again until it becomes yeah. this second nature. And then you can be creative. Once second nature sets in, it becomes muscle memory. Well, the problem being, I'm in a basement. There's ventilation, but ether sinks. And... Uh, after a while, I started getting really, my, <laughs> my legs start getting really rubbery. And I thought, oh, my God, I've killed myself somehow, you know. And I, I just quick <laughs> ran up the stairs. And within, you know, a few gulps of fresh air, I felt fine right, and realized what it was. Fun. But yeah. it was the first time that I realized photography was a little less safe than I thought it was, you know. And I had to, to be a little more careful. But, you know, with that over the thing, I've never come around and hurt myself. Now I'm, you know, I, I'm really careful with the cyanide. Do you do you work with cyanide or do you work I with just bisulfate? Okay. Yeah, I used to work with cyanide. I I have my cats like to go down there, and I know everyone is probably yeah. got cats, cat hair. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, I I can't have that um, in my yeah, house. Yeah, Carrick says beware of the almonds. You smell that little faint smell of almonds. Right. Will be the last smell you smell. Yeah. 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 Oh well. I, I, I'm fine with it not clearing that fast and having to wash it longer. And I, I really, when I put them next to each other, uh, I just, I, I don't yeah. think it's a good idea. There's a little tonality, I, I guess. But, you know, what I find is that it's all in your exposure. It's, you know, I mean, it's yep. in that exposure. And there is that real fine critical exposure there where just a little too much and it's not that great and a little too little isn't but you hit it right on and oh the contrast is gorgeous That's, and it's yeah. beautiful you know so yeah and it's just that yeah. moving target of temperature and everything else that kind of for somebody like me <laughs> me who tries to corral that tiger it's a hard one to corral you know but it's yeah i always tell people that's kind of why they invented film was to make it a little <laughs> easier but safer Yes, yeah, so it does Paris take the fun out of it. Teaches with cyanide, and I, uh, except for you, except, except for, for Bill, Bill yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, we do. I, we we do it with that. And I, I do. I do like the look and I will do it on my own. But if I'm teaching somebody, I won't go near the stuff, you know. Yeah. Too many no, people I have screwed up other it. little things that if they had screwed up that one, it would have been an ugly yeah. scene, you know. Yeah, no, it's not a good idea. And I had a student bring up, bring me over a tray and we had a huge sign saying, you do not move this tray, you know, and yeah. do not put your hands in here only with gloves. I'm big, a big sign right by the tray. Oh, yeah. And she walked over to me with a tray and I thought it was water because there's a big sign saying, don't move <laughs> this tray. Oh, and no. And it was cyanide, and oh my I gosh. Just, this is this is not okay. I'm not doing this anymore, yeah. and th it's not working for me. And that was it. That was the last. Yeah. Uh, there's people that come to photo stock that use cyanide, and they know who they are. And there's times when it's like, you know, you're outside, of course, but you know, if something turns blue on you, you've not washed that too well. And if you've not washed it too well, and there's that acid mixing with that cyanide, wow, you know, you, you got lucky is what it was. And yeah, it yeah. looks cool, but you got lucky. Yeah. So yeah, well, yeah. anyway, you so can get that blue color other ways. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, don't try this at home, kids. That yeah. kind of thing. It's, it's um, not a good idea. So what else would you like to do? I mean, tell me a little bit about the family thing. I mean, I saw that scroll by a little bit longer ago. Now, you're first generation in this country. I'd like to talk a little bit about your show because it was, was it two years or three years ago now that you had the show at Ellis Island? Yeah, Ellis Island was uh, three years ago, just now. Um, it opened up three years ago in May and was there for the summer. And um, nice. yeah, it was, it was wonderful. And and also because right before the sh about a year before the show, I moved up to the Hudson Valley. So all of a sudden I had this space. And so I didn't have to think small anymore or just that things would just go on the wall. I could right. think about, you know, making big prints. And then, I, I don't know what, we started seeing all these people just throw out all these gorgeous old windows. And I just, started picking them up and then I passed by a construction site when I was in New Paltz and we went over and the guy said yes please take the windows so I just started collecting the windows and um and then I needed to figure out what to do with them but I never would have been able to do that if I was still in New York City so right. having this space was really quite something and um and that's when I made that glass house and so the glass house is fascinating. I mean, it's beautiful. Now you've, Thanks. that's not only been there, you've taken that out to LA. It's gone out to photo LA. Yep. Um, Photoville, the people at Photoville were just fantastic. Um, so at first I had it in Dumbo and then okay. said, wow. nice. know, we, we want it to go out to LA. And I'm like, I can't afford to ship it out there. And they're like, no, no, no. Well, they gave me a grant. They're like, we'll do it. Wow. And fantastic. So I mean, they've been so supportive. They've been, they were so fantastic. And so then it got to go out to LA. And then when it came back here, there's a place called Saunders Farm in Garrison, New York. And it went up there. And nice. then in um, and Saunders Farm, that they have um, cows running around the field as you've got all these big sculptures um, in the fields. And so we had to put a wire, a fence around the house to, to keep them the from going in there. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and it looked like an internment camp. So it was like, so it keeps wow. growing. And it was really quite wonderful in that, in that way. It takes on new lives. Yeah. The cows did oh, go wonderful. in. <laughs> so now, now this was, I mean, I'm going to show people once again, this is the house here that you can see on the cover of the book. Yeah. It's really a really cool shot of it too. Yes, yeah, Stephen. Yeah, Levy so this is this is at Photo LA. Yep, yep. And Stephen Levy is a photographer in Los Angeles, and he took that picture, and I just loved it. And I yeah. so I asked if I could put it on, um, you know, on the cover. But but the idea of the um, of the house was really, uh, you know, I started doing this series on immigration. So I'm first generation. Okay. Uh, my fa on my father's side, he's a German Jew, and they left Germany because they had to. My grandfather was in Buchenwald. Um, he wow. got out, 
Um, he luckily got out. Um, but they, you know, they lost everything. And um, they had stores in in Germany. Um, and thanks to the uh, family, the lights family who owns uh, who owned like a cameras. Um, oh, they, yes. They made sure that they had um, credit um, so that even without money, they could get uh, cameras uh, so that they could start a camera store. And they had the first camera store in Miami Beach. Oh, my God, that's fantastic. What because a story. It's like family. Yeah. And um, wow. they're wonderful people. I've gotten to, to meet them. And um, they're, they're terrific. And they didn't know this story either. None of us knew the story because uh, Ernst Lights wanted to keep it quiet. He just wanted to help people and do his thing. And, right. um, and then a, a photographer who was uh, getting his, um, his doctorate in photo history, uh, Frank Daba Smith, was writing this story, just learned, I don't know, he read a silly article and then just started doing research and told everybody, you know, the true story about the Lights family. It was really, it's quite an amazing story. Um, but because of all of that, I didn't want it to be, uh, when I decided I wanted to take portraits, I didn't want it to just be about people that didn't, my family didn't want to immigrate. I wanted it to be, well, why did people that wanted to come here? You know, and 9-11 has happened, um, you know, and people were freaking out over immigrants. And uh, so I really wanted to show how wonderful, I, we're all immigrants. Nobody's not Right, immigrants. oh yeah, most definitely, um, which is. You know, might not be first generation, but you're you're not from here unless you're a Native American. And, no, and so which is lost on a lot of people right now, I would say, but we won't go there, so there yes. we go. Yeah, and I kept thinking, oh, it's going to get better. It's going to get better, and instead, it got worse, and it was right. crazy. Um, so when I was doing the show for Ellis Island, part of it had to be an educational show because that's the kind of museum it is. But they gave me six galleries, and so it was. I think I want to make this glass house, and those that are in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. And Very good. This is fantastic. Yeah. Shower. I always think of things in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> it is one of the best places to think and sing. So, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, it works. I can't sing, so I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, not but many so, of us can, so. Yeah. That's fantastic. I mean, and see, and that's, the, uh, thank you. So that to me just... I mean, it's wonderful to talk to you, but that's kind of what I'm hoping is to hear these things. I mean, I don't think a lot of people knew that part of the story for you. I mean, it's fascinating to me that not only is, you know, the camera and photographic art kind of your life, it's sort of your lifeline as well. I mean, it's just, it goes way back in your family and it also has this, this interesting twist, you know, that's pretty fascinating. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And, um, and from us just learning about, I mean, it, I wish I had known a lot of this stuff when my father was alive. Uh, yeah, because then you can ask the questions, I know. But they wouldn't talk about it. And I think it's so important uh, for people yeah. to talk about it. Um, but my, my daughter did, um, my younger daughter did a movie when she was 17 on the family. It's called uh, One, One Families, oh shoot, I forgot the name of the thing. Well. If people want to see it, they need to look up Sally Enfield Rabinowitz on YouTube, and they can watch the video. She okay. talks a little fast because she was 17, and she was just talking fast. But but it's it, there, and it's online to be seen. And, yep, and it's wonderful. One family, okay. story, one family story, surviving the Holocaust. Okay, I'll try to get that link in the description as well when yeah. that comes time. Yeah, yeah so, but I mean... It, it is fascinating that you've got that far back a connection. I mean, there are some of us, like I, I have a great grandfather who came over from Germany in the, the middle to late 1800s, basically to escape conscription. And he, he married a Bohemian American woman, just the marriage of convenience. And they split up here and then he met, you know, my great grandmother and the family yeah. began. But he was also wow. a photographer, had a studio in Detroit mm. from the late 1800s all the way up till his death in 1917 and shot, you know, thousands of people's portraits and now people collect those around the world from fairs and they send them to me and it's amazing to see his reach 
from well over 100 oh, years ago great. now. So, yeah, yeah, but nowhere near as interesting a story as yours, you know. I don't know. Amazing. That sounds pretty interesting. It's like yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> you know, what I'd like to think is at least my family kind of knew when to get out of Dodge, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like he got out before it before he got out while the getting was good is what yeah. happened. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, and so the thing was is that my family had the cameras around and you know, I grew up with Cool. My dad had three brothers, and there was always enlargers and all these strange things. So it became sort of, you know, so you just something our people it. do. Yeah. 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 Same kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's so, so it's such a wonderful thing to grow. I mean, my both my girls grew up in the dark room, you know, and it's it's such a great thing, even though, you know, one of them doesn't have an interest in photography as a career, you know. Right. Or, to do anything with it she still she grew up with it she understands it she yep. has that sensibility and i just yep. think it's such a great thing uh to grow up with it's it really wonderful. is like my son evan i taught him how to platinum print at 12 and he's he was good mm -hmm. you know i mean i would i would give him something to print and be confident that it was good you know but he's yeah. just lost the interest you know he knows how to do it but it just doesn't you know but I'm glad that that base is there, you know, I mean, yeah, not I all of them, not everybody can somewhere. be like us and just get obsessed with it. And right. Keeps, yeah. Yeah. But it, it, it works, you know, it's in their psyche. And I think that it's something that's really, really good for them to do. It is good. And it's something that's sadly missing in today's education. You know, I mean, they don't have such heavy emphasis on the arts and things like that anymore, which even though, you know, of course, you're not going to be an artist, perhaps, you know, I mean, only, only those you know, crazy ones of us do be, do mm -hmm. that, but 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 it's so well rounding and it fits in so many bricks in the in the wall. You know what I mean? And I don't yeah. mean to say it that way, but yeah, it's it's difficult. Anyway, yeah. so this is yeah. great. So we've had a great time. We've almost gone an hour here. Can you believe it? Oh my goodness! Wow, I'm surprised people are still on. Thanks, guys. <laughs> they are. We still have 54. It's really nice of them. And I keep trying yeah. to read some some comments and questions. Um. Is there anything that else that you'd like to keep? I mean, I could keep going all night, but well, I just I don't want to assume. I did just see uh, Melanie Walker. You know, her dad was Todd Walker, and Melanie grew up in the in the dark room. She said her first print was a paper negative. She made a Van Dyke brown with it. Paper negative. First print. That's pretty amazing. But her work is amazing. It, so. <laughs> I'm going to have to go. I wish I could go through all of this. I'm hoping that when it's done that I can go through everything and see what everybody said. But anyway, somebody saying they really enjoyed this. Thank you. Well, I just got to say thanks to everybody for watching. This has been fun. And yeah. I don't know. Thanks to you, Jill. This is really cool. You made it so easy. Oh, so, well, This maybe. is my first. Thank my first. You. <laughs> oh, no, no, this is really good. And, you know, the thing is, is that we'll have to do this again. I think we could stretch this into two hours real easy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we haven't done anything terribly instructive, but I think that we've been pretty informative, well, or you've been very yeah. informative. Well, yeah, thank it's you great. So you, and I appreciate it. And uh, thank you so much uh, for. No, it's cool. Well, well, we got to get you back here physically, you know, I mean, it's. Yes, physically. This is a great space to work in here. And I got a great dark room. And I just, you know, it's kills me that that you're not going to be here next week i just uh, it's killing me me too so yeah. we'll I get there i've never been home for this long of a stretch i have never, <laughs> i've never done this before um and it's funny because everyone says well how are you doing at home and i'm like i'm not really doing anything different except that i'm here constantly you know yeah, so yeah. i'm not i would work at home just like i am now but then i would leave for a couple of weeks Exactly. And, That's you know, awesome. I mean, I know that you last year, you were in Norway after after Penland and, you know, you're normally yeah. out there, out there yeah. uh, tagging the uh, continents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. You know, like uh, Carrick, Carrick was online. He and I were leading a trip to Faroe Islands that we would have been back already. But, mm -hmm. you know, during that two weeks, I was supposed to be gone. Oh, I was like fit to be tied. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. you just your body's just, feeling like you're supposed to go. Yeah. And Instagram is coming up, you know, I normally lead trips at this time of year. So Instagram is popping up memory after memory after memory of like, it's like, oh, man. I know, and then you just want to you know, throw the phone. It's like, leave me alone. <laughs> I know, I know. But, you know, then I have to look on the bright side and say, at least we've got those memories. And, you know, we've been lucky enough to do what we do, even though we're not driving Cadillacs and stuff. We're, uh, right. I guess you don't say Cadillac anymore. But, yeah, it's, <laughs> it is what it is, right? 
Yeah. To say a, a, an often much too used uh, saying there. Yeah. Well, anyway, I appreciate this. I'll try to get more links up on this. Uh, for everybody that's watching, I'm going to repurpose this and put it up on my YouTube channel also. So we'll be able to watch this forever. And uh, I think that it was good. I, you know, I'm very, very, very uh, honored to have had you here. So I appreciate it. Well, I feel the same way to you. And this, this ah. is a new way of saying thank you instead of shaking hands, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. All right. Well, take care of yourself and we'll talk again. All right. Don't Sounds be a stranger. Good. Yep. All righty. All right. Thank you. And bye bye. Thank you, All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye. Bye, Joe. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.